पण सरांशी बोलू जयभीम सर ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर सुखदेव थोरासर अँड ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर माया प्रमोद मॅम आय वेलकम यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ association for social and economic equality nagpur honorable participants of this webinar i firstly welcome you on behalf of the association for social and economic equality gautam thoda javal yun bola awaz thoda kami hai javal gya mic okay sir this 19th webinar is organized by association for social and economic equality this is the regular task of asi today's topic is the issue of caste discrimination and segregation in dalit colonies in kerala the state of kerala is known for its health education employment overseas migration ideology missionary tendency increasing participation of girls in education employment and population ratio surrounding beaches and tourism and so on it is natural to think that there should be no problems like caste discrimination and segregation in kerala which is the motto of economic progress but it is a sad shock to know that even kerala does not look much different from other states in the country in terms of caste discrimination and segregation apart from the obvious disparities kerala is also a state like other states in india which plagued by caste system and caste discrimination ambedkar warned that wherever you go caste discrimination will become an obstacle or a threat to block your path in this context today's issue is very important now we will understand it in depth firstly i request professor dr sukhdev thora sir for introductory remarks professor dr sukhdev thoras sir yeah good evening to all of you uh, uh, is my voice audible gautam yeah yes sir clearly 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 okay okay friends uh, uh, as a part of the of a regular lecture series uh, organized by association for social and economic equality today we have 19th lecture by uh, a speaker from uh, kerala uh, maya pramod maya pramod is still doing a phd in uh, one of the universities she is a mother of two children beautiful two children uh we discover maya by accident we the brandeis university usa has started a caste journal global journal caste global journal online journal which has become very famous now we, as a part of that journal's activity <coughs> we, annually we give two award on the name of one particular a uh, us person uh, blue award we invite papers uh, and select the two best and give the award the, then our uh, those who are selected are invited to usa at the cost of the organization uh, and their paper also are presented and also included in the caste journal in the very first year uh, uh, this award went to maya pramod and one more gentleman and that is how we discover her she is a very brilliant uh, researcher and it is through her also i 
got to know a couple of things about the uh, Kerala village and discrimination in Kerala village. Uh, I think uh, her first supervisor, uh, Sanal Mohan, um, uh, has, has for the first time brought the slavery of untouchable in Kerala, South India in a way, which is the worst form of slavery that is to be found in any part of India. So Kerala was, in terms of caste, was a worst state, I would say, compared to any other state in India. Uh, the... <laughs> Uh, Maya Pramod is going to discuss us the, the condition of Kerala colony. They are called Dalit colony, as a matter of fact. Uh, why I got interested is that you all of you know that residential segregation of the scheduled caste is a very ugly uh, problem that still continues to persist, despite the <coughs> constitution. There is hardly any village in the country where the Residences of the untouchables are not uh, adjunct, um, uh, outside the main village. There are variations. In some, they are just uh, on the adjacent to the high caste locality. Some are little away. Uh, uh, in some, like in some villages in Tamil Nadu and perhaps Kerala and UP, if the locality is that of a sweeper, sanitation worker, then there is a wall also. And you know, there was a moment in Tamil Nadu where wall was broken up. Kerala is a very unique state where they have a separate colonies for untouchables. So, which means that you have an independent village of a Dalit. Uh, it is not outside the village, as we say in Marathi, Gaukusa Bahir, or Little Away. No, it's an independent village colony, and it's called like that. And how this colony has emerged, what was the reason behind this colony, or you can call it a village, is a very interesting issue. And what kind of discrimination they suffer as a separate village, whether they get adequate amenities uh, uh, to the Dalit the village, uh, because in, in our area, for example, in Maharashtra, and the Dalit locality being adjacent to the main locality, the facilities given in the village are extended to the Dalit locality also, we, although not quite sufficient. Some, sometime the road will come up to the high caste, and it won't be extended to the low caste locality, or the tap water will be uh, not extended to the uh, Dalit locality. But as an independent colony in Kerala, an independent village in Kerala, what are the problems they face? And Maya Pramod has really examined in greater detail. This is, this is her in a way PhD uh, thesis, but she has published some article already. Now, you know that Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar, right from the beginning, argued for the separate settlement of untouchable. And that he continued throughout his life. Finally, this demand for a separate settlement of untouchables was included in the state and minorities. The in a way, his draft constitution in 1947. And there also he talked of a separate settlement of the scheduled caste. Now, what is the reason for, for having a separate settlement for the scheduled caste? Because he believed that the association with the high caste, although living separately, uh, in that atmosphere, uh, the untouchable would not, the Dalit would not be able to enjoy the common civic right. They will have a problem to access the whale, they will have a problem to access the village, uh, temple, public road, and there will be a constant humiliation and denial and also the um, atrocities. Therefore, he said that uh, this is not possible if the untouchables are on the periphery of the high caste and they continue to sort of work together in one form or another. They are socially segregated, residentially segregated. He gave two reasons as to why untouchable will not get equal right if they are with the, with the high caste locality. One reason he says that the Dalits are in minority. 
in every village. There are hardly any village where they live silent majority. In a mix, I'm talking of mixed village where high caste and uh, untouchable caste residents, but separate residents. So the Dalit being demographically in minority, the high caste in majority, so they are able to enforce many things because of the uh, majority power of population. The second is that the Dalit, so most of the Dalit being landless laborer and small farmer or marginal farmer depend entirely on the high caste. And this dependence, in fact, inhibits them, discourages them to ask for the equal civil right. So this uh, demographic uh, dominance and economic dominance of high caste, uh, which give the high caste both the strength, the demographic and economic strength, whereby they can crush the attempt by the Dalit uh, for equal right. And if you read the history of uh, even in Maharashtra or in Vidarbha in the, in the mid-60s, when after the Untouchability Offense Act of 1955, when the Dalit tried to get the equal access to village amenities, there was a huge violence. Now it took so many, so many, so many decades to normalize the relationship, but still the Dalit do not get equal access to the amenities. Therefore, he suggested that we should have a separate settlement of Dalit with an independent means of production. So separate village, you settle the separate village, construct the houses, there should be a rehabilitation commissioner, he suggests the organization method also, and you construct the village uh, houses separately, and also give them the land, five acre, 10 acre, whatever land, each family, so that they are not dependent on high caste. So he used a very important word, you have to break the linkages with the high caste, and those linkages are uh, of living together as well as the economic linkages. Unless you break that linkages, untouchable will continue to face. And that is what precisely is happening today. Uh, that despite all law, despite all caste, anti-caste movement, untouchable do not have equal access. In some, they have better access. Maybe in Vidarbha, in Maharashtra, compared to other states, we have better access. Within Maharashtra, I think the Vidarbha is has much better access to the amenities in the village, but Marathwada lags behind. But nevertheless, in no village that there is a equality as such in, uh, in behavior and in accessing public utilities and participation in religious or cultural or social function. So therefore, he asked for a separate settlement with the independent means of production. I gave a thought to it that this is an impossible proposition. Uh, how do you create in every village a separate village in a way? But we have that experience if we try. He said that the rehabilitation and settlement commissioner should be set up. A fund should be given to the commissioner. A commissioner should identify the land in each village, public land, and construct the houses. Now, you know, after the at the time of partition of Pakistan, millions of people, lakhs of people came. And what we did, we settled them on independent land. Government identified the public land construct the houses for them, and then they did not give him an agricultural land, but they gave him money, 30,000, 40,000, and tell them that now you are on your own. Uh, now, this is this, this has been possible. You know now, you can see Sindhi or Punjabi or all those who have come from Pakistan are well settled people because they, they had a capital, they had experience of business and other things. They have settled, and it is on a large scale. So if that is possible, why not settlement of the scheduled caste is possible? Because it's a major issue. So this was is at the back of my mind. Then I discovered while talking to Maya Pramod and uh, I went to Kerala also for a lecture that Kerala is the only state probably where they have a separate colonies with no relation with the high caste. So I thought that uh, it is quite possible that we, this is what um, Dr. Vasa Ambedkar imagined there is in Kerala, there are separate colonies. So if, they, if you don't have connection with the high caste, there is no question of atrocities and relations. Uh, but I later on discovered, and I asked to Maya also, that no, this, this, uh, atrocity and discrimination still persist. Uh, the reason being that although they have a separate territorial land where they, uh, they have a village or settlement, economically, they are dependent on high caste for their survival. So that economic linkages has not been broken up. 
while the physical linkage has been broken up. Therefore, I thought it will be very interesting to know from Maya Pramod as to what is the situation of Kerala colonies or village in terms of their socioeconomic status and discrimination. Uh, I have given a long background because I thought you should, we should understand as to why we have taken this topic for a uh, uh, discussion. I think with this remark, uh, uh, I uh, go back to Gautam and Vidya uh, to introduce uh, Maya Pramod and, uh, and I request her to share her view. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for introductory remarks. Now, I invite Mr. Vinit Dupare, student of Gokhale Institute of Economics and Politics, Pune, Maharashtra, for the introduction of Maya Ma'am. Yes, sir, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah. Audible. Sir, I'm audible. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, uh, good evening, uh, and Jai to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Association for Social and Economic Equality for giving me this opportunity. Today is my pleasure to introduce honorable speaker, Maya Pramod Ma'am. She is a PhD research scholar, Christ College, Department of History, PG, and Research Center, University of Calicut, Irinjal Kuda, Trishur. She has completed BA in History from NSS uh, Hindu College, Changacheri, in 2006. Also, she has completed MA and MPhil in history from Social Science, Mahatma Gandhi University. Currently, she is pursuing PhD from Christ College, Irin, uh, Irinjal Kuda, University of uh, Calicut. Her title of the PhD topic, the socio, uh, socio-economic aspects of Dalit colonies in Kerala. Her research interests include colonial studies, cultural studies, autobiography studies, modern Dalit writings, early modern writing on caste, also caste and gender studies. This research article has been published in APH Publishing uh, Corporation, New Delhi, 2015, on uh, Dalit in Urban Spaces, a special reference to Changacheri, Dr. Sundar Raj, Social Exclusion, Dimension of Marginality in India. She has also published a paper in South, South Indian History Congress, a 41st uh, annual season, presented a paper on sociocultural changes the role of Christian missionary, uh, missionaries in a 19th century Kerala, August 2022. She attained a program on Durdarshan, National TV Channel of India, and talked to paper, talked to the paper, The History of Ambedkar, Department of Durdarshan, Kalikar. Also, she has attained an international writing competition of caste, Bandris University, Boston, United States of America. The paper won the first prize and first Blue Stone Rising Scholar Award, the paper on As a Dalit Woman, My Life in a Caste Ghetto of Kerala, and published Caste a Global, uh, global Journal on Social Exclusion, J. Caste, Boston 2019. Also, she has delivered many talk, conferences, national and international presentation. We are extremely privileged to have a, such a marvelous personality with us today. I would request to Maya Pramod, ma'am, to grace this occasion and start her speech. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Vinit, for a nice <laughs> introduction of ma'am. Now I request uh, Mr. Maya Pramod. Uh, ma am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. You are audible. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just share the PPT. Uh, to see this, my PPT. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. First of all, Jai Bimol, and thank you for having me. Great opportunity, my dearest sir, professor, and all the team. So, uh, I enter my paper. Uh, my paper uh, is very interesting. So, because I'm talking to the history of pre-modern Kerala and modern Kerala in the caste uh, transformation and uh, habitat transformation of Kerala. So uh, I discussed my paper, the transformation uh, and the forms of Dalit colonies in Kerala. And it depends upon the pre-modern Kerala to modern Kerala. 
uh, to get the uh, to get the paper we must understand uh, in kerala history slavery slave period and uriyavela it's related to the slavery so we will discuss the uh, slavery and uh, in the pre modern history of kerala uh, the query in uh, in the agrarian relations in kerala in the past was based on caste it was the majority domination of brahmin that lead to the feudal agrarian relationship brahmin had the ownership of all agrarian land they han uh, they handed over land to sappas like nayar irava and um, dalits in uh, in the uh, graded uh, system so by the creating various uh, tenorial relationship uh, at the lowest and the caste hierarchy was the agricultural laborers called dalits or serfs or slave people slave peoples the supremacy of landlords and the caste hierarchy was continued the first ppt looked at the history of the colonies socio economic context and how land as the uh, adds to the process of capital formation to the history of the colonies begin with the transition from a hut or kuti uh, the local term of kuti to a colony in the pre modern kerala in slave period in modern kerala this paper extends in inequalities and segregation in the social positions of the dalits it also take into the account of the history in the various colony settlements welfare schemes and uh, by the government and the socio economic impacts so um, this was the experience in land and agrarian relations in kerala um, was based on the caste scholars and academicians stand on different uh, opinions and uh, different theories is different in caste related to caste some academicians and argument that it was after the chera chola dynasty was that casteism came into the existence and also the argued the caste system was created the brahmin slavery and caste systems are different social forms slavery was a seen and practiced in every nation but india was the only country which practiced caste system and caste continues to the import factor in determining the culture and living conditions and social norms they will look at the caste um, houses of the uh, that period uh, the, uh, that means the the name of uh, houses in the caste mentions they were called in uh, il mana in uh, it is the local term mana in brahmin settlement brahmin houses and illam in nambudri nambudri houses tara in nayar nayar houses and irva houses then then in dalit houses names is kudi madam chala in the worst name of uh, kudi madam chala in the uh, in uses of uh, kerala society and uh, people uh, used the name in uh, that period in kerala history then um, it was a uh, great history to deal with the uh, slave slave history then almost all slave uh, caste mainly in pulayas uh, pulaya is a sub caste of the uh, dalit in kerala pulaya and paraya in kuravas became the lowest class in the social hierarchy in kerala they were considered the slave of the upper caste who treated them like animals and subjected them to a cruel discrimination they were provided to the necessities uh, of life very miserably uh, and the most uh, disgusting things were feast to them they were bought and sold like a cattle often uh, mistreated uh, at that time um, they were uh, buy and selling the uh, cattle in a, in a slave market in uh, every space every place in kerala Uh, to running the uh, slave people to buy and sell the nayar or brahmin in a, uh, in including the childs uh, in a uh, in the uh, age of uh, in born to in 18 18 ages so um, 
they were the uh, uh, they were everywhere workers were paid the minimum wage that was sufficient to sustain them they were considered untouchable and unapproachable and their sighted presence were defiled to avoid the pollution of upper caste the slave caste hung it to certain distance from them at 72 or oh, 72 uh, ad in malayalam news 72 uh, miles in uh, in english time times in a uh, untouchable pollution in uh, brahmin and dalits it also interesting note to the strict rules regarding the distance that the avarnas have to keep from the savarnas as such they were denied free access to public roads wells temples and markets polluted they were presses they had no right to uh, education they were denied a right to dress uh, decently uh, or use god their marriage was paid for they have never worked in le- uh, leaving themselves their entire lives depend their masters in uh, masters means the brahmin or nayars maya maya uh, maya ma- ma- your slide you want to move or there is no moment uh, of the slide okay okay sir okay as you speak you should move the slide so that people can okay, see okay 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 sir okay uh, then the slave class were often employed as agricultural laborers and paid the lowest rates uh, the work of the pulayas was mostly confined to the paddy fields uh, mainly suffering the uh, community in pulaya in the uh, back of history uh, the drying the paddy and making embankments in fencing digging fertilizing and plowing weeding transplanting the agricultural seeds anything containing grain was not considered the untouchable so the parias and kuravas were mainly engaged in the labors in agricultural sector and uh, craft making including the uh, bamboo and other things so the upper caste retained the slaves the absolute right to sell and uh, uh, chain or kill them they were forced to toil in the soil from down to dust with a uh, adequate food or pay the brahmins treated them in the most inhuman manner subjecting them the uh, unspeakable cruelty and suffering that period in slavery in kerala uh, there is the reality of slave uh, slave and slavery peoples in kerala in that period in that time uh, if you look at it that way of mahatma enthali and poigi lapachen and kurumben devathan all the colonies asked for this kind of survival but when they asked for the land the availability of land use of the land agricultural land the need for housing were clearly mentioned it because they know very well that it was not easy for dalits to survive in this society like other communities without land or agricultural land ayankali uh, engaged the uh, first Uh, movement of uh, in bullockard uh, bullockard uh, movement so i can it challenges the existing social conditions and as part of the efforts and the uh, and the untouchable to roads in 1898 he brought us a bullockard and wearing a white banyan in a turban set on your uh, on his head then an adventurous uh, uh, way of bullockard Uh, and journey through the public streets the upper caste blocked the journey and had a physical fight uh, with the iron kali but he can, continued the journey in balaramapuram in twadram iron kali uh, the first uh, struggle in iron kali in long struggle against the denial of freedom of movement as was a step forward to the historic freedom of uh, movement of the system of production and uh, movement of the um, Uh, transporting in the um, public road and uh, uh, denial of the uh, wearing in the dresses uh, in upper caste uh, upper uh, dresses in the uh, in that period at the same time upper chins questions the social power and uh, litigation interventions related to the caste untouchability and slavery uh, were the dominant current of the caste system um uh, and in, in a post of the where people in such a society there uh, much be built from the uh, schools in prds at that time in the same thing uh, missionary missionary was coming in the kerala uh, samuel mitir 
uh, one of the uh, famous uh, British historian. Uh, uh, he mentioned the uh, slave, uh, slave uh, history in, in that time. Um, he discussed the uh, pre-colonial slavery in in the period of uh, some. Uh, he talking to the feudal characters of uh, character of the domestic labor is a social reality of historically existed the caste itself. In a feudal society, it's entirely related to the state's attitude toward doing. Uh, whether it's an argument can be seen within a uh, political economy and the uh, nature, it's a labor relations in the requires of the further study. Uh, he shared the experience in a slave people he told me that uh, he told him he told that he was paid in a 60 rupees about two shillings when uh, sold a slave uh, he argues that he has the power to sell his slave uh, his slave at a, any time that the sale being made a, separating the uh, husband from his parents and child uh, as a as gift to friends at the marriage ceremony to his daughters or to pay off debts he gives his slaves and he calls his slave in a cattle uh, or kanali in Malayalam time. And most slaves die in their youth uh, due to illness or middle age. Uh, they lack food and clothing and are not considered a human. According to him, they are a uh, drunkards and a real monsters. Uh, then Samuel Matthews share the experience of selling the uh, selling and buying the uh, slave in a, a Nair, uh, Nair man. Then, um, when the study uh, in his colony, the most important is the history of the first settlement colony in Travancore in Amara. The colony was formed in 1917 in Amara, is the settlement colony started from the PRDS. Pratyaksha Raksha Devasabha formed in Poige Lapachan. Uh, they were uh, buying a, a land in 55 hectare in 36, la 36 cents. The place was transformed into a colony uh, to settle the uh, uh, different pe uh, different uh, uh, Dalit peoples, in, including Pulaya and Paraya, Korava, Siddhanar, and uh, more people have to settle the, the Amaraburam colony. Uh, Amaraburam colony is uh, including the uh, small uh, uh, small houses and uh, uh, schools, including schools and post office, in a library, small craft manufacturing unit, and uh, cemetery, a place to uh, bury and uh, dead people uh, to the time because uh, they were denied the uh, dying people to bury in the in that period. So uh, the first colony was started in the history of Kerala was PRDS and Poiti Lapachin. Then officially, uh, the government started in the colony in 1920s after the Polya colony in Chalakudi in 1920s. And then after the colony in Nayadi colony in Palakkada. Then now the uh, around the colony in the contemporary period in Kerala in more than 30,000 colonies in Kerala. Then um, we were more the uh, next slide. The land was uh, made and available to the tenant who leased it from the landlords as a possessive farmer and the real farmer who worked the land was classified as a slave and confined to the right to tenure and excluded from the land ownership. In this way, the possibility of social and economic capital accumulation through such as land was eliminated and the history of the formation of a special space for a new filtering process began to the face of communal inequality, then called a modern uh, caste colony in Kerala. So uh, the uh, form of uh, modern uh, settlement colony in Kerala was started in the first ministry in Kerala in 1956 in EMS ministry. Uh, they were started in the colony in the details in 1961 uh, Kerala Legislative Assembly uh, special proceedings. Uh, look at this uh, uh, colony uh, counts in Trivandrum in 28 colony column in 13 colony, Alpera in 14 and Kotem in 17. Almost uh, three, uh, nine district teams, uh, more than uh, 269 colonies in 1961.
Then six decades, they were uh, getting the colony in 30,000 colonies. So uh, life of the people in the geographically distinct area influences their socioeconomic and their cultural development and also plays a vital role in determining social recognition and authority over resource, every social structure and areas, land is an agency of power. Thus the change brought into the life of man due to the geographical variation has to be noted. Moreover, it is also linked with the availability of resource or the necessities of capital formation. Man has started living as a separate tribes in a very early age. Uh, this was the uh, uh, this, uh, this is the time uh, the first Delhi colony. Uh, I also mentioned the first Delhi colony. Then uh, details the Amaravaram colony and slave uh, slavery. Or also explained the slavery. The first place of colony information during the 1961 and availability of resources. Example: caste and capital power. Uh, the main thing was caste is the negative power pertaining to the every fields in um, Delhi in, in Kerala. Uh, including education and development area and caste and academic area and in everywhere uh, including the uh, moreover the power to use is the uh, slur uh, uses the words of Dalits in uh, Kerala in digital era. So next slide is um, as a researcher, try to find out an outcome, our outcome of the history of Dalits in Kerala. Beside the historical and a social alienation, the Dalit community experienced the kind of physical alienation because the colonies developed for them by the governments were without a sufficient space or amenities, poverty, illiteracy, and the unhygienic surroundings accelerated, accelerated their marginalized from the mainstream society. Then the uh, 26,198 colony, in, uh, in, in that colony, uh, the education literacy in 10% only. Uh, in, in a higher education to go, um, go in the students in more than uh, 10 or 20 in a colony. Uh, then the experience in a uh, Palakkad tribal colony, uh, we are going to the uh, field work in that colony, uh, almost uh, 198 uh, houses in that colony. Then uh, only three houses uh, was uh, uh, studying the uh, children in uh, one, uh, one uh, I forgot uh, her name. Uh, I think uh, Danya or something, uh, she is doing in a degree and her uh, brother and her elder sister in, uh, in eight or nine classes. There were three students are studying in the uh, colony. They are the current condition in the education process in that colony in Kerala. <coughs> then um, moving the um, uh, next slide. <coughs> in the study focus, there is life and backwardness in clearly connected to the historical and the social and the political reason. They were denied a basic civil rights and excluded from socioeconomic resource. Colonies set by governments accommodate the lower classes, including Dalits, created various socioeconomic consequences for the society. In the first phase, the colonies were given to those who were isolated with the houses and land related to the agricultural sector. It was enabling them to survive. Look at the picture. This is the uh, house of uh, Dalit colony in Palakkad. These are the reality of development uh, process of Kerala, including government take the houses. <coughs> then the, uh, we Maya, find the- Maya, Maya, which year is this? Uh, in 2009, sir. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. We find a caste untouchability as a uh, malpractice, faith or as a social institution in a society. In 2016, uh, in uh, this picture in a Palakkad Kovindavadam colony, uh, mainly in the uh, Dalit people in, um, in a, um, 
uh, in a in people in Marvel, uh, Marvel and community or in in a uh, in some they were traditionally in Tamil uh, Tamil people uh, they were migrated in the Palakkad area in six decades six decades then the uh, colony uh, in 2016 Govindapuram issues uh, uh, there is a uh, famous issues in Govindapuram uh, they were denied in the uh, going to the uh, public road and uh, um, buying a grocery uh, and um, buying in a uh, dress or something and take a water uh, then uh, higher caste uh, higher caste communities are uh, uh, bound uh, then set a boundary in water connection then uh, one pipe was uh, Dalit people and another pipe was uh, higher caste people in, uh, I think in Chetir people, uh, in, a, in an OBC people. There is a big issue in Kerala at that time because uh, the political party was uh, in a silent uh, that time, in mainly in CPM, in a leftist uh, political wing uh, in, that, uh, in that time, in a very silent at that time because the media was covering the uh, story uh, at that time. Then uh, we are moving in the uh, next slide. Uh, I also mentioned the Kila survey. Uh, according to survey conducted by Kila in Kerala Institute of Local Administration, out of uh, 26,198 colonies in 55% of the scheduled caste are living in the deplorable conditions in uh, 71,368 uh, are completely destituted. The study also revealed that the 64,000, 64.77% uh, uh, had education below. Which year? The which standard. Maya, which year? Maya, which year? You have to write a year, sir. Maya. Which year it is? Uh, 2009, 2009. Ah, so you have to write a year. Whether we don't know. Yeah, okay, okay, sir, okay. Uh, okay, go ahead. 2009, okay. okay, okay. okay. 2009, okay. 2009. Okay. Uh, so uh, had an education below the 10th standard and uh, 0%. 0.09 percent had a professional education. Uh, professional education uh, has to three people in one or MBBS and one or uh, BTEC. Uh, other uh, are uh, uh, stopping the education in IT uh, in in the uh, colony. So the segregation for the colony, uh, the existence of AC colonies in the consequences of historical residential segregation. Residential segregation refers generally to the uh, special uh, special separation of two or more social groups within the uh, within a specified geographic area, such as a village or town or metropolitan uh, area. People can be residentially segregated on can be uh, basis of the any aspect or achieved characteristics such as religion, race, ethnicity, socio economic status, etc. But the uh, main thing was, caste is the prime reason of the segregated life of we see in Kerala. Residential segregation is a visible in rich and uh, affluent communities as well as the poor and minority communities with the low levels of capital. Residential segregation due to the untouchability, the question of separate settlement uh, of a C has never been discussed widely and uh, naturally there exists uh, or no theory as to how they see who treated as untouchables came to live outside the village or mainstream of the society. It is the caste system dividing Indian society into the number of self-continued and completely segregated units caste their mutual reasons being uh, ritually determined in a graded state. Uh, there is a, in the primitive Hindu society, there were settled tribes and broken men. The settled tribes founded the village and formed the village community, and the broken men lived in a separate quarters outside the village for the reason that they belonged to a different tribe and therefore to different blood. The untouchables were originally only broken men. Since they were broken men, they lived outside the village. At the same, uh, at the same time, Perceptions of separate residential quarters and untouchable in, uh, in the uh, Kerala. Then um, there were more uh, into the six decades after the states of Kerala came into the uh, came into being. The number of 
Dalit or Nisi Kerala in uh, uh, 26,198. As per the official data of government, Kerala in 2009 and 2009 uh, administration. So, these are it mentioned in 2010, 2009. Uh, unofficial records say that there are more than half million such a colonies in Kerala, around uh, 3,44,193 Dalit families live in these colonies. Since they own only three to four cents lands, it is uh, true that the generation leaves there were who only have their kitchens as a place to bury their dead bodies. Among these, there are about uh, 1,41,078 people who were homeless. And there were also the scattered leaves in the wastelands and the coastal regions and in the plantation sector, uh, etc. Then the uh, Um, the government policies and the classification of colonies. Uh, then uh, different types of colonies, SC habitats. Uh, the government name is SC habitats, uh, but uh, officially known as government habitats. People known as Dalit colony or caste colonies or Pulia colonies and, and etc. Then categorization of colonies in uh, traditional colonies. Uh, I also mentioned the pre-modern period to form the uh, Kudi two colony in the traditional colonies and settlement colonies. Uh, government by, uh, by the uh, a separated space and migrated the people uh, in the uh, special uh, spaces in that is settlement colonies. Colonies with the mixed habitats and colonies exclusively for scheduled caste and luxury colonies. Uh, in 1961 uh, was formed in luxury colonies. Colonies with the mixed population. Uh, some colonies was uh, formed in a mixed population. They were including in other caste in, uh, in some families in Muslims and uh, uh, obese in mainly in Yerava. Then uh, developed the colonies. Developed the colonies means uh, life mission. It is called the uh, government of Kerala was uh, announced, announced the uh, a big uh, development project in life mission. But uh, this uh, project was denied the basic civil rights of Dalits and Adivasis in, uh, in that uh, life mission project. Uh, it, the, uh, it is the mixed set that colonies. Then uh, I am moving the final uh, slide in uh, concluding. It is from uh, such a revelation that all historical protests over land rights ha had sprung up in the past. I strongly believe that production and distribution of capital has a significant role to play in the socio-economic and a political plight of every Dalit Adivasis of Kerala, including me. With the caste ghettos, I also mentioned the uh, mention uh, in ghettos, not a caste colonies, are getting upgraded to the new housing project and uh, life plans. The inevitable question of whether we need this after all should rise for, from us. For no colonies to come up uh, further, we should demand the complete redistribution of land. The caste colonies are the living form of the institutionalized caste system that thrives under every other elected government and marginalized communities in the grab of development. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me a great opportunity. That be more. We will discuss later. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for your most valuable presentation. You placed an actual picture of Kerala regarding caste discrimination and segregation in the Dalit colony. Thank you very much. Now, again, I request to Professor Dr. Thurasar for presidential remarks. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Can can uh, Maya? Can you remove your uh, PPT? Ah, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, before I make a, some remark and um, help the audience to understand the issue, and then they can ask the question. I just want to have one or two clarification from you, Maya. Okay, sir. When we talk of Dalit colony, mm. uh, which means it is an independent village, isn't it? 
No, sir. Uh, yeah. It is not independent village. Uh, yeah. It is under the taken of government in a uh, uh, small panchayat or village or block. It is not yeah. an independent village. Yeah, it's a village. But, uh, but where is where is the high caste locality? High caste locality is a public domain. No, public is how, far, how, far, how far it is from the... Uh, uh, it is um, more over the 10 to 15 kilometers or more yeah. than 13 kilometers. Yeah, so now now the Maharashtrian and the audience will understand that the Dalit mm. colony in Kerala means you say independent settlement and house and mm -hmm. high caste location, high caste village is 13 to 14 kilometer away from the Dalit locality. Now, okay. the second question I want to ask you that in this independent Dalit village, uh, mm -hmm. the amenities are provided separately, isn't it? Yeah, yes. yes. They are poor or they are good or bad. So Dalit person need not go to the high caste locality because that is 13 kilometer away. So yeah. all, all civic amenities like drinking water, public road and whatever uh, is given to the Dalit colony. Is that correct? Yeah, this is, uh, okay. it's correct. Yeah. So the uh, discrimination that the Dalit colony suffer is that they are not given enough land for the houses, small land. Secondly, is that the land. amenities are not provided adequately. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. sir. Exactly. Okay. That is what I understand. Uh, you okay. also refer to a village where there is a Tamil migrated population. There you give mm -hmm. an impression that that village is adjacent to the high caste uh, settlement. So yeah. are you ref are you referring to some of, some of the Dalit colony which are just near to the high caste? Or the... Uh, in Palakkad, uh, Palakkad Govindabhram colony, uh, yeah. They are near to the uh, AC colony and uh, other side in uh, higher caste uh, higher caste village in Palakkad. But, but they are they are only few, okay? Yeah, they are only few. So as per your statistic, uh, almost all, uh, almost uh, as all per your statistic, as per your statistic, around two thousand uh, seven twenty seven thousand Dalit colonies are there. Yes, which yes, means which mean they are independent villages with their own amenities. And this government also continue that separate colonies. There are no mixed yeah. mixed villages. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, yes, sir, yes. So the even leftist government continue the separate colonies. Exactly, sir. Yeah. The left government was uh, continuously practices the uh, development and uh, other amenities and denied a civil rights and they denied a basic right in that colony at the time. No, 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 no. I don't understand. You are mixing up civil right and all that. You know, if they uh, are accept, they, because, listen to me, Maya, listen to me. Don't play okay. with the word. You know, you are borrowing okay. this Marxist terminology in our terminology. <laughs> no, no, when, no sir, okay. when, when there is a separate village. <laughs> okay. And there is no question of using the te village temple or village road. There is no question of civic hmm. access to civic right. Okay. Access to civic right comes when there is a common tap, common road, common temple. Here, they, mm -hmm. everything is separate. They have their own well, well, they have their own road. They, if they have their temple, they have separate temples. So there is no question of access to civil right here. I think, okay, we can discuss that. But the question is that the government doesn't provide enough civic amenities to the Dalit colony. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly, sir. They, exactly. Do they have their panchayat also? Yeah, exactly. Panchayat, sir. Panchayat. Oh, there is a uh, sarpanch and there is a, but that that panchayat must be the panchayat of only the Dalit, isn't it? Uh, or or the, these mixed two villages, Aikas and Lok, uh, Dalit village. Um, it is not mixed, uh, mixed two villages. Uh, yeah. Then uh, panchayat was uh, undertaken the colonies. Uh, they are the uh, separated spaces because I, I mean the separated spaces in uh, almost all colonies was located in the uh, rural area uh, in a wastelands or something. Oh, one of my main simple question is: Is there a separate panchayat for the Dalit colony? So that sarpanch, no, no, no. up sarpanch and member of are there from own caste, and there is no mixed panchayat, high caste and Dalit panchayat. What is the situation? Uh, I think uh, uh, mixed panchayat, mixed panchayat, mixed panchayat. Not panchayat. Only so they, they, are panchayat. Put, they are put together with the high caste. For election purposes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly, exactly. So they may have uh, a small number. Yeah, of the members. They may have a small okay. number. Okay, I understand that because uh, there is a need to 
uh, have, there was a need for a clarity on what you said. Okay. okay now sir. let me make some comment and then I think people will ask the question. I think, friends, uh, it's a very interesting study by Maya uh, Pramod is that she has given the history of uh, Dalit and slavery, untouchable and slavery. Please remember well that Dr. Ambedkar in his, some of his essays, Hindu Social Order, Philosophy of Hinduism and elsewhere, mentioned that there, there was a slavery in Hinduism. Clearly, there is no problem about that. And there were, Manu mentioned seven slaves, uh, Narad Smuti mentioned 15 slaves. So there was a slavery. This was a Hindu slavery. And Hindu slavery means the concept of Hindu slavery was that you, you cannot have a, the untouchable, uh, the Shudra cannot have a Vishya as a slave or Vishya cannot have a Kshatriya as a slave or Kshatriya cannot have a Brahmin as a slave. It was in a reverse order. Brahmin can have a slave, Kshatriya, Vishya and Shudra. Kshatriya can have a slave, Vishya and Shudra and untouchable. So this is how the graded slavery was there. But since untouchable untouchable were at the bottom of the caste hierarchy, they were completely slave of all the four caste above them. Even Manuspruti and others mentioned clearly that untouchable are a slave caste. Now this new, new point, which Baba Sahib has mentioned, but I think uh, it goes to the credit of Sanal Mohan from Kerala and there is one more lady. What is her name, uh, Maya? Sharda Mani. Sharda Mani. Yes, Sharda. They have written... Sharda Mani. K. Sharda Mani. K. Sharda Mani. Ah, yes. She has written a book ah, in Tamil, Tamil and Sanal Mohan has written a book in English which is published by Oxford. For the okay. first time, they have brought out the untouchable as a slave caste or untouchable as a mm -hmm. slave. Uh, and it brings out a pathetic story of untouchable as a slave in Kerala um, and part of Andhra, part of Tamil Nadu and worse form of slavery that is as she has mentioned, Maya has mentioned some may not have understood it <clears throat> slave means what? Slave means uh, uh, is a property of the owner of the slave uh, yeah. the property land. in the sense is just like a land so mm. uh, the untouchable were the property of the high caste that is the Namodri, Brahmin, and the Nair, and they can they could sell them to another landowner. Mm. Then they could sell husband to one landowner and wife to another landowner and children to another another landowner. Yes. That is that is how the form of slavery was in Kerala. Now the 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 untouchable uh, Dalit being untouchable. The untouchability and unseeability and unapproachability to which Maya has made a mention is very, uh, very important to mention. That to some extent it was in Maharashtra also, but not in slavery, but untouchability. There, the untouchability means what? That you cannot touch. That's fine. Everybody knows. But there was the, in Kerala, a distance was mentioned that when an untouchable talked to the high caste, how many meters he should stand? You have uh, meters, uh, Maya? I think 62 meters or 70 meters. I don't 70, remember. 71 huh? to 72. 71, 71, 71 to 70 meters, the untouchables will stand. If he yeah, comes closer, he is subject to violence and atrocities. Exactly. Secondly, he sh the untouchables should not see sight eye to eye because that caused untouchability. Therefore, the consequences of untouchability was that Although the untouchable were slave, all of them will live in the field. They are not living in the house of the landowner. The, the, the people who work in the house of the landowner were Shudras and not the untouchable. So they live uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the rice farm in a very, very ugly, uh, ugly house. Some shapes which has been made, they stand in the water for 10 years. So they suffer from all kinds of health hazard. We have written a now we are we are in the process of writing a book on the slavery among the untouchable. Me and Amit Thorat, the situation is so bad that they will get uh, several diseases. They did not have enough to eat, so they will eat the leaves of the trees. And uh, Maya has not shared with you. She should share with us that her grandmother, grand grandmother was also slave. Maya, can you tell me in two minutes? Uh, my mother. Uh... A grandmother was a, 
slave in uh, Changanashiri market. Uh, yeah. One uh, one dominant Nair community in Changanashiri. Changanashiri is a local uh, place in Kotim district in Kerala. So the uh, market was uh, the slave market was uh, situated in the uh, Changanashiri. Then uh, Nair, uh, one, uh, one of the famous Nair community uh, buying in a uh, my grandmother uh, family in Changanashiri. Uh, so uh, my grandmother uh, was migrated to Changanashiri. Uh, actually, uh, our native place in Putanadu in Alapra district. So uh, the Nair community uh, was buying my grandmother in the time yeah, of so the slavery British, period. The British banned the uh, slavery in 18... 43. 18. Yeah. So you, you are referring to the situation before 1843 or afterward? Uh, I think uh, before. It, before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you can see that she has a first hand experience in the family that her grandmother was a slave where she was sold to the Nair family. Now, uh, I, I, won't, I won't take much, much uh, time. So one has to understand that the Kerala's untouchables was worse than even other places. You know, there are stories and romanticisms are uh, expressed that the Kerala untouchables are progressive and they are they have higher education and all that. But she has brought out the story of the housing and the educational level. Of course, the poverty of Kerala, Dalit in Kerala is lower than the other state, but the situation was very bad. Now, yes, because untouchability and approachability was strictly followed, their settlement were also be supposed to be at a different place. Unlike Maharashtra, where untouchable could um, stay near, adjacent to the uh, Marathas or the Kunbi. But in Kerala, no. Mm. They were given separate land and separate villages were created and they were given some mm. infrastructure as a result mm. of which um, uh, uh, the poor facilities. I want to ask one question and then I finish it. That okay. where they given the land for cultivation so that they were independent of the high caste or they were landless, less landless and they continue to depend on the high caste? Um, they are not uh, um, They are not getting any land at that time. Uh, they are dependent on higher caste in, in, the, in, in that kind of period. And so they work on the land of the high caste? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they were not economically independent although their settlement were different. Settlement very different. Okay, <laughs> okay. Different. I understand that. Maya, uh, I think it is an excellent presentation. I will summarize by saying that you can see that the worst form of residential segregation. Sir, one more thing was uh, yeah, mentioned. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, the most common issues in AC colonies, uh, land, uh, especially in land, no proper land records and uh, no patem. Uh, it is the government records or ownership of land in the Patem, called Patem, and uh, no specified boundaries, limited extent of land. Uh, they were in three or four cents. Uh, at the same time, house, uh, uh, they were denied the drinking water and uh, electricity, no proper street lightning, and yeah. road connectivity in main uh, public road. So wastewater management and sanitation, uh, provisions and improvement of social infrastructure, such as schools. School was far away with the colonies in 25 kilometers. There, there, is, no, there kilometers. is no school, separate school for the Dalit village. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, all, all amenities are mixed. All okay. amenities are mixed. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So you can, friend, you can see the situation of the village. Uh, the only thing, only positive aspect perhaps which uh, Maya can comment is that since you are not living day to day, in contact with the high caste, you don't face a day-to-day -day humiliation or discrimination. Is that correct, yes, Maya? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that exactly is what Dr. humiliation. That is what Dr. Ambedkar argued and expected, that if you have a separate mm -hmm. settlement and you have no social relation with the high caste, so the humiliation and atrocities and discrimination on daily basis will not operate. Mm -hmm. but, but as Ambedkar expected, they were not given an independent economic means. Had they mm -hmm. been given land, and separate mm -hmm. settlement, they would have been completely cut off from the high caste and they would have mm -hmm. lived their uh, better life, but that was not done. 
I think uh, you have seen the problem in Kerala of separate settlement. I think I'll stop here. And with that, and uh, Gautam, you go open up answer question because I wanted to bring okay. a clarity. Ah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's very shocking that there was a Hindu slavery in Kerala too. Now there is a session of question and answer. Uh, Maya, ma'am, please uh, observe your chat box. There may be okay. questions for you and uh, okay. accordingly. Okay. Okay, sir. No questions uh, in the chat box, but uh, there is a, a comment uh, from Nagappa Holgar, sir. Thanks, Suraj, sir, and others, uh, co host for arranging this webinar. Jai Bhim. Dear participant, raise your hand or write your question in chat box. Yeah, very good report in details from Kishore Khandekar, sir. Thank you. Has Christianity affected the slavery? Of course, Christianity affected the slavery. But the uh, uh, good thing was, missionaries was uh, uh, missionary was uh, protected to Christianity or uh, converted Christians in the period because uh, the uh, two groups was formed in the time. Missionaries uh, was protected the converted Christians. And the other thing uh, is the Hindu community, Hindu Dalit community, uh, mainly in Pule and Paria. Uh, Ayinkali, uh, uh, Ayinkali uh, denied the uh, con conversion in Christianity. And Poigela Pachan also the same uh, attitude, the uh, conversion. Because uh, Poigela Pachan was uh, every, every time uh, he talked and uh, he sing a, sing a uh, song in the uh, in that period in a uh, Christian uh, dominance and a Christian slavery in the period uh, because uh, also is a good uh, good to the comments in the uh, missionaries uh, missionaries coming in Kerala because uh, they were uh, they were uh, working with the right to uh, right to the basic civil basic human rights and a uh, and then a good education facility in Kerala. Uh, of course, the uh, there is a good uh, good thing because at the same time uh, they were protected the uh, caste uh, discrimination in the uh, Christianity and church at the same time in Kerala. Uh, uh, I think Maya. the mention in the yeah yeah go ahead. Okay, I think the mention in Poigila uh, Pachan uh, wrote in his song. Uh, in a Malayalam song, Uleer Kuripalli, Parayar Kuripalli, uh, Kuravar Kuripalli, uh, uh, other communities are uh, separated in a churches in the time in missionary period. In Uleer, Uleas in a separate uh, church, and Parayas in a separate church, uh, and Kuravas in a separate church. Higher caste in a one church. Uh, they were not entered the, uh, in the church in uh, Dalit people. That is okay. the reality okay. of uh, Maya. Christian, there are two more questions. You uh, read and answer them. I will talk about this issue later. Yeah. Uh, what is female education status in untouchable? Uh, what is the female educational? Uh, is it female lower education compared status to the in... other female, or what is the status they are saying? Asking. Okay. Uh, what is the female education status in uh, untouchables? Um, more than it is good to female education in Kerala in contemporary period. Uh, I think the first female uh, SSLC passed and is graduation passed in uh, Dakshayani Velayudan. Um, do you know the Meera Velayudan, a famous academician, uh, her mother Dakshayani Velayudan? Uh, she is the first uh, SSLC uh, passed, uh, passed out and a uh, Graduate passed out in uh, in Kerala in 
1940 or uh, 30 something. Uh, I don't the correct uh, date. Uh, in Takshani Vela even. Then uh, at the current situation, female uh, education status are, uh, status is very good because the, at the same time because the higher education um, higher education area uh, was very uh, dangerous because uh, they were uh, they were getting to uh, normal facilities in academic area academic institution uh, they were not getting to fellowships they were not getting to the uh, female uh, phd holders in the uh, in using the labs or something uh, in kerala recent issues in deepa deepa p mohan uh, there are a lot of issues in female education mainly in female education at the same time female education is very good uh, at the pre modern period to modern period who carry out the public cleaning activities on board is the status of selling in the producing market whether the market is also separate for that is no not uh, separated for that is uh, in the market uh, in the separation and uh, uh, discrimination is working in the government uh, government project and mm, government uh, development uh, process uh, at the same time the process for working in uh, education or uh, in the special issues related to the public domain this is the reality actually hello 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 uh, hello, hello ma'am mm-hmm. hello, hello ma'am surat is uh, your talk is very informative only thing okay. i want to ask Thank about you, the female education yeah. is most of the nurses from kerala they are coming to maharashtra state and other states also So mm-hmm. I want to know whether these uh, nurses they are from Dalit or from other categories or what, because these nurses are very efficient in their working and they are very intelligent. Um, sorry, ma'am. Uh, last uh, last poll, I think uh, I don't know in Maharashtra situation, uh, but Kerala. uh the female education and the um, no the kerala nurses they the, are coming to our maharashtra state kerala nurses sometimes your voice was breaking from churches kerala nurses ha ah, oh, okay, okay okay ma'am yeah ah okay kerala nurses uh, almost uh, all people uh, All, all people have known as the nurses in Kerala is a development process in Kerala. It is of course uh, almost Kerala nurses was everywhere in working because uh, the Dalit female uh, in nurses uh, is is um, small. Uh, people have to come come out the nursing or um, medical education in Dalit people. Uh, I think 2009 Kila uh, survey uh, the female uh, female uh, female students was uh, coming in the higher education in medicine or nursing in ten uh, more than ten ten people only more than ten people only. Okay, thank you. In 2022, I don't know. Uh, then 2010 or uh, 15, where the reality because. Uh, educational there the nursing educational cost was very high bsc nursing uh, fee is almost 3 year fee is 3 lakh something or uh, in pri- private uh, then government in limited seats in uh, sc candidates sometime the seat was uh, allotted to other communities every time the issues in uh, kerala uh, in separate uh, the sc seat uh, converted the uh, general seat the recent issue uh, they all know the recent issues in dr rekaraj in kerala in mahatma gandhi university uh, the supreme court verdict in uh, uh, i think yesterday or uh, something uh, rekaraj lost her job in ng university she is working in a three years in gandhi and thought in ng university the department of gandhi and thought uh, she is now try to work in the open merit in um, department so i don't know what the uh, what to go in the uh, 
current situation in uh, higher education in Kerala. Okay, thank lot you. of people was completed the education in PhD or doctorate in JRF. Uh, they are not getting the job because uh, almost all college was located in the aided college in Kerala. Uh, moreover, uh, 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 higher communities in like Irava or Naya community, Muslim community, uh, Christian community. Almost all colleges in, in aided colleges. Government colleges uh, are limited. So uh, at the same time, government college was uh, uh, working with the uh, uh, lectureship or uh, notification in something. Uh, they, are no, they are not getting because uh, all, all uh, getting to the uh, leftist uh, or political parties, leaders, wives, and something. We are not getting jobs in our community. Yeah, the Maya, reality of the... Yeah, Maya, in Kerala, there are a large number of uh, minority colleges, institutions, school and colleges, Christians and Muslim. Uh, very high proportion. Yeah, of course. Yeah, what is the... Is there a uh, participation of Dalit in Christian minority institution as well as Muslim minority institution? <laughs> I think it's far better to the minority. Uh, uh, it's compared to the Hindu aided college or Muslim uh, aided college. Uh, it is far better to the minority institutions uh, approaches in Dalits in Kerala. Okay, there is the last question. You can do you take a last question. You read okay. it. This how far uh, uh, is that today? No, that uh, leave it. I, I will answer uh, that yeah. at the end. There is a question down below. Yeah, Aditi can a oh. question. Oh. No, no, Bapu Wankade, I think. No, Bapu Mandal. Sunil Bapu Mandal. Okay, sir. Jai Bim to all. Is there yeah. uh, happening? Happening. Intercast inter marriage. Inter marriage. Are there in family? any family living? Okay, Buddha culture. I think uh, Dalit people uh, has... Uh, not known to the uh, Buddha culture in uh, in the in the time of Kerala because almost all Dalit people has uh, believes and going to believe the Hindu tradition because my family is the example uh, because traditionally in proud to say that my mother also including we are Hindus uh, I also regret to <laughs> say that we are Hindus. I, every time I denied, I'm not Hindu, I'm not Hindu. Every time I denied to my mother, because almost all uh, Dalit people has uh, be, uh, really, uh, religious beliefs in Hindu, uh, because uh, they are, uh, their belief and their, uh, they're separated in Hindu goddess and gods, are, I don't know, something like that. Um, Intercast marriage uh, was uh, happening because limited, limited because uh, there is a big issue in uh, intercaste marriage in Kerala. Uh, other state was, um, because we all know that uh, North Indian state was very cruelty in the intercaste marriage and killing, honor killing, of course. Uh, at the same time, uh, Kerala was working in a um, different uh, way of, uh, uh, different way of the uh, process because in the person was uh, coming to, to happening in intercaste marriage, uh, people banned in the uh, public space or something. Uh, family was banned in a, a boy or girl. I think uh, almost uh, in a uh, higher caste men or women, they are not getting to Dalit or Dalit boy or girl. They are not getting to Dalit or boy or girl. Because racism is the uh, main factor, color. Mm -hmm. Higher caste class. girls or okay. yeah, higher caste girls or boys are uh, proudly saying we are white. Okay, uh, Maya, hello, okay. hello, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, what, yes, is, sir. What, is, what is the present position of the list? Any, are they, uh, there are any followers of Buddhism or Ambedkar thoughts? Can you focus some? Yeah, of course. Uh, in in modern Kerala, uh, there are the different space of uh, Dalit uh, transformation. 
Dalit ideology and Buddhist ideology in the uh, two different uh, transformation. In, in 1960, uh, they were smallly brought up to the Dalit ideology and uh, uh, Buddhism. Uh, I think uh, contemporary period, uh, almost all uh, higher education uh, in the part of uh, boys or girls in Dalit community, uh, they were uh, clearly believes that Ambedkar ideology Mm. They are the mm, best uh, ideology in the uh, solution and uh, improvement in the uh, Dalit situation in, in that period in Kerala. Mm. Okay, uh, Maya, that, uh, uh, I will uh, all, let me... uh, no, follow the Ambedkar ideology and uh, Buddha okay. culture. Okay, Maya, I'll take these two questions because I thought we should answer. One is the okay, what sir. is the situation situation of Dalit in Kerala, and second is of hmm. course the uh, role of Christianity in slavery. You uh, have answered you have answered that briefly, but let me tell you that uh, you know your own supervisor Sunil uh, Sam Sanal has hmm. pointed out that it is the Christian missionary which took the lead for abolition hmm. of slavery. There were slaves uh, with the Christian. Uh, actually, I'm uh, I'm regret to that point because uh, and uh, because the part of uh, only uh, not to the Christian missionaries uh, uh -huh. because the part of Poikela uh, Pachin and Ayankali Kurumban Devatan and local Renaissance periods in in that time because uh, they all are working with the uh, band in slavery at the time. Because uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, proceedings and there uh, there a uh, lot of uh, memorandum in the Raja Sabha in that time in Poigila Pachar and Ayankali. Uh, Ayankali was, uh, was a Dalit, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They are, uh, belong so, to the so what you are, Kulea what you community. Are, yeah, what you are saying that Dalit leader also worked for the abolition of the slavery before 1843. Exactly. They are working with the abolition of slavery in that period in Oigi Lapachan and Mahatma uh, They are what not is, uh, what, the history what? of Kerala. Uh, uh -huh. They are uh, completely uh, renaissance that period in missionaries and Oigi Lapachan and Mahatma Ayankali. They are the complete process of the uh, abolition of slavery in that period in Kerala. Okay. Because so you, the, you don't... Uh, I believe. You don't you don't feel that Christian missionary had a, some significant role in abolition of uh, slavery and their linkages with the anti-slavery uh, organization in UK, which Sanal Mohan is your supervisor is arguing. Yeah, exactly, sir. <laughs> My supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one more thing was uh, uh, is the important factor. Uh, the missionary was coming in Kerala. Uh, they are working with the uh, first. Firstly, they are working with the higher caste, but higher caste was uh, denied the uh, missionary uh, process. Uh, higher caste was fear with the missionary <coughs> process. Then uh, missionary was going to the uh, untouchable, uh, untouchable peoples, mainly in uh, Pulaya, Paraya, and uh, other other caste. They are converted. Uh, their uh, their people was converted in a uh, uh, Christians or Paraya Christians. Uh, they were working with the uh, schools or some craft uh, craft making, some weaving and some school. Uh, some opened the school. At the same thing, uh, one more uh, one more the important factor is uh, missionary was opened the school uh, in English or Malayalam Malayalam medium schools, but. Uh, but the uh, children uh, was getting to uh, getting uh, not getting to the English education. Poigil Apichan was starting uh, at the same uh, 1920s in the starting in the schools in English medium school in Bengalatukum in Patanthitta district. So uh, they are the first schools in the untouchable. Yeah, so so uh, so uh, what I'm saying that. Christian at least started the school for the Dalit and allow them admission. Exactly, right. Uh, the exactly Brahmin, right. Brahmin, Brahmin, uh, and Nair, Brahmin Nair didn't do anything. They, in fact, stopped the education. No, 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 no. Huh? no, 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 no. Why? No. Why do you say? It is now, Nam Namudri, has, working, uh, Namudri has Namudri has Namudri has opposed the education to the untouchables. Uh, 
Nair have opposed the education. Yeah. Uh, while and Christianity, and, uh, Christianity, uh, Christianity, Christianity supported the education, why don't you accept the progressive role I of think, Christianity? I think, I believe that colonial modernity is the working in the missionary and Christian process. In that that is okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay, but Christians, missionaries start the school and admitted the untouchable student. While the yeah, Namuntris and Nayak right. did not start the school, forget about the starting the school, but if somebody give the admission, they opposed it, isn't it? Okay, that's one issue. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I think you have to look into this issue. The huh. only question that I answered, want, there is a question that how far improvement is okay, there okay, sir. today uh, among Dalit. Uh, uh, I think who asked this question? Uh, Sunil Pat Sundeo Patil. You know, I think the all said and done, okay. if, you take, if you take all the indicators of human development, hmm. Uh, if you take the health indicator, if you take poverty, if you take income per capita, if you take educational level, I think Dalit in Kerala are doing better than other state. Uh, that we must agree. Uh, yeah. If you compare Dalit uh, in Kerala with Bihar, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. Exactly right. right. Yeah, Rajasthan, they are doing much better. Other state of, was compared? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. The only thing I will not, I am not quite sure, I will have to check up is that the educational level in Maharashtra is possibly almost on par mm -hmm. with the educational level in Kerala because the educational level in Maharashtra among the little, mm -hmm. little higher. So uh, uh, this one has to understand mm -hmm. that the Kerala model has helped the Dalit also. Although the okay. Dalit in Kerala are lagging behind the high caste, but they are mm -hmm. little ahead of Dalit of, compared to other states. That will be the safe okay. state. Okay, go ahead again. Uh, question, please. Sir, question from Aditi. Yeah, who carry out public cleaning activities? And what is the status of selling the produce uh, uh, in the market? Whether market is also separate for Dalits? Uh, I think I also answered the question. Uh, not separated to the uh, market uh, in Dalits. Um, Public cleaning, of course, public cleaning activities in those to public uh, Dalits, of course. Uh, scavenger work was uh, provided to Dalits in Kerala. Scavenger workers, almost uh, scavengers are uh, scavenger municipal uh, scavenger workers are mostly in Dalit people. Uh, one of my MPhil study, uh, I was uh, I was. Uh, conduct a survey in scavengers, uh, workers, uh, more people was uh, coming from the community, scavenger workers. Thank you. Far, okay. How far improvement is there today? I think um, we got a great education uh, and uh, we get into a great facilities uh, and we get in a great um, social accumulation, social capital. Uh, we will change the situation in uh, in the contemporary Kerala and after the Kerala, I believe. Uh, because uh, I believe that land is the main asset of uh, development process in everywhere. Yeah, there is a question at the end. Can you read it? Oh, no, 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 sir. Uh, in the present there uh, is a having the situation. No, 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 no. I think Devdasi tradition in uh, pre-modern Kerala in, uh, do you know the Brahmasam and Devasam? That period uh, in the form, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in going to the uh, process of the Devdasi tradition in uh, old temple uh, in that period. Uh, and now to uh, continue the Devdasi tradition. Most Catholics, Kerala Christians are converted from Brahmins. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, almost all Christians has believe, uh, still believe, uh, Christians has believes in uh, they, are, uh, they are the Brahmin uh, hereditaries. Uh, still they are Christians, but uh, in, in a small uh, jobs example, uh, uh, in a Sunday uh, papers, in Sunday newspapers in Kerala, I think uh, the, the power is out. Um, Sorry for the interview. Yes, you are audible. Audible, Maya. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, in in the Sunday papers uh, in 
every uh, month in Kerala. Uh, in a uh, in the page of middle or something groom uh, ad or uh, in death anniversary ad. In uh, in a person in a Catholic or uh, Syrian, uh, they're the obituary ads in uh, they're the grand granddaughter in uh, Nambudri or um, uh, or Brahmin something. But uh, now in a Christian, they are proudly saying they are the tradition in Brahmin tradition because the uh, because they are mentioned in converted from that period in slavery period, right? Yeah, with uh, Maya, can you tell us the? Uh, of course, the, now Devdasi system is not there, but in the past. There was yeah. a very ugly system that the untouchable women, girls were not allowed to cover the upper portion of their body. Exactly. Upper when portion. did the, uh, yeah. where, where, how when did this system was stopped legally and uh, does it and legally legally stop the system? Uh, when when, then, when was that? Uh, they are the upper cloth moment in. Uh, um, I forgot the community name. Mar um, Markel Samaram. Upper cloth movement in um, Marmarakel struggle in Kerala. Upper, upper cloth, cloth, C L O T H, cloth, cloth movement. Ah, yes, yes. Upper that cloth movement. That is the moment which asks for allowing the Dalit woman to cover the upper body. No, not allowing to the Dalit woman. Uh, uh, actually, the, uh, I am working with the uh, uh, upper cloth movement uh, because uh, I am Kali. What I was the Kali. demand of upper cloth, mo cloth movement? Uh, because he demanded uh, in uh, denied of the uh, uh, ornaments of Kallai Mala and uh, we we uh, we wear to the uh, upper cloth in uh, in the uh, demand of the uh, at the time in uh, Ayankali. Well, was was this restriction uh, not to cover the upper portion of the body by female was only confined to untouchable or it was applicable to other caste women also? Unt uh, untouchables. untouchables. Only untouchable. Uh, no, 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 no. I think uh, Brahmin and Nambudri was covered the uh, breast or uh, Yeah, body. that's what I'm saying. Then but the untouchable... Nair, then Nair uh, and uh, Nair Edeva and untouchables are uh, co not covered the breast or uh, woman. Uh, uh, body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and untouchable also, mainly. Untouchable also, and mainly untouchable also. Mainly uh, at the time, Kalai Mala struggle uh, was uh, conducted. The Ayan Kali. Okay. Do you remember the year? When the, do you remember the year when the system was stopped legally? Um, uh, I think uh, uh, I forgot that year, sir. I just before the, the, the before yeah. the independence, isn't it? Before Be the yes, before but the independence, before the okay. independence. Okay. okay, I I just want to share with the participant that we talk of Devdasi here in Karnataka and part of Maharashtra, where girls are mm -hmm. donated to the temple and then she is mm -hmm. subject to sexual exploitation by the priest, and the this is the religion by the priest and the village people in Kerala. Uh, mm -hmm. The untouchable woman, particularly young girls, women were not allowed to cover uh, their mm -hmm. upper portion, their beast. They were required mm -hmm. to be open. Uh, okay. Then there was a movement against it and it stopped, I think, something around 1800 something. I don't know now. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a known uh, uh, ugly practice in Kerala. Ugly practice in Kerala in a simple of cast, uh, cast in untouchables in a uh, lot of ornaments in uh, stones making stones uh, their, their neck was fully covered in their breast and yeah, neck stone was they were stone by stone, stone ornament they were not allowed yeah, to stone use ornament, the, stone. they were not allowed to use of course gold silver or even copper yeah they, they, they were, were not allowed, allowed to use to the uh, ornament made of stone yeah made of stone it is the caste symbol of uh, untouchable woman in uh, yeah, in yeah. the period yeah i understand okay Yes, any other question, please? Um, my little son was crying. 
Okay, so uh, Vidya, Vidya okay. and Gautam, you want ah, to yeah, yeah. choose Maya now because she has two, two children. Yeah. And they are there. I, I think can so. ball out the family. Yeah, they are shouting now. Okay. okay. Uh, One more thing is, uh, it is a great session. Oh, nice, nice and uh, one more thing is, it is a great, uh, great session. Um, uh, I was starting in a, a small uh, fear because my language little bit okay. of a problem. Okay, but okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm confidently uh, asking and I'm, I'm confidently talking to my dearest parents. Okay. <laughs> because, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you did well. Maya, you did well. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Uh, uh, now, now I invite to Professor Alka Patil, ma'am, for who of thanks. Patil, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good evening, all. Good evening. I am Alka Patil, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, SS Girl College, Kundia. Now it is the time of vote of thanks. Today is the 19th webinar, and this topic is very, very, very informative and very. I can't express so many bad uh, practices and ugly and horrible practices we listen here. And we think, if, how was that day? How can they survive with the stone ornaments? How can we survive? It's a very horrible matter. First of all, I would like to honorable Dr. Sir, so much, sir. Always you are guided us with a different topic. Today, we are uh, very uh, enlightened us a very horrible situation and condition what the, the, the untangible people have in that, in, those, in that day. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to thank Honorable Maya uh, Pramod, madam. Madam, there is no problem of your language. We can very understand your language, madam. Thank Definitely, you. <laughs> it has a great session. And you uh, taught us, you enlightened us with a very different uh, situation and very, uh, what kind of uh, situation in the Dalit people or untangible people uh, had. In those days, even now, we can survive so many little bit things in discrimination. In all India, we can face not only very ugly practices, but but direct indirectly we can face so many discrimination in a working place or in a society. Thank you so much, madam. You are very guided us very well. Thank you so much, madam. Next of all, I would like to thanks Honorable our Dr. Vimal Thorat, madam, uh, who always uh, she always uh, enlightened us a very different topic, ground level topics. And very new and a uh, 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 different, particularly topics. Uh, Madam uh, always told, okay, what what kind of situation directly Madam faced, and Madam uh, know that topic, and Madam share definitely each and every seminar. Madam share with us. Thank you so much, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. That, I would like to thanks uh, coordinator Honorable Dr. Trivo uh, Khajare sir, Honorable Gautam Kamre sir, and the uh, best organizer Vidya Chopragar, Madam. Uh, best anchor and uh, introduction, Shuddhajan Deepatar sir and Vinit Dupare sir and all uh, all the participants uh, who uh, us, uh, who the, all the participants who are uh, webinar success because no if there is no participants we cannot uh, success our webinar. Thank you so much for the participant. I would not I could not uh, named all the participants due to some reasons because I'm out of <laughs> Uh, range actually. <laughs> uh, uh, again, I would like to thank uh, direct indirect people, uh, those who uh, success our seminar and all the participants. And again, uh, the guest, we are very honored with you, madam. My madam, thank you so much. You have uh, told very different topics. And thank you so much, sir, Dr. Subdhat Thora, sir. They told us about uh, what, what was the situation in particularly. Uh, I don't know, actually, I know that name, the, that system. There we cannot cover our uh, upper body of the uh, body, but it was a, we even we think about that we are good in on our uh, uh, hands. How can we survive with the stone ornament or anything else? Thank you so much, all of the participant and all of the guests and honorable subject for us, sir, uh, for, to give us such a knowledgeable seminar. For today. Thank you so much. Okay, Maya, attend uh, to your I, children now. Okay. 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 
Thank you, Zed. Thank you so much. Bye, 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 Bye,